You know the deal? I'm all about healthy hair. So today, we gotta talk about protein. Hey YouTube fam, it's Alyssa Marie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Before we get started today, please go ahead and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are interested in hearing about healthy hair and about my natural hair journey, etc, etc. I promise you won't even regret it. There's a reason you're here, so you might as well just subscribe. Today, I want to get into talks all about protein. Everybody always talks about protein treatments, keratin, cholesterol treatments, etc, etc. Like, you always hear the word, but like, do we actually know everything we need to know about protein. I feel like there's some really good sides to protein, obviously. It can be very beneficial, but on the flip side, there's some other things about it that most people probably don't actually know. So I just really want to have like a full-on discussion about the good, the bad, and everything in between. So let's just get started. All right, so first things first, let's talk about like what protein is. Like you keep hearing about it, what the hell is protein? So I am definitely not no scientist, but I've had a few conversations with different curly hairdressers. So I've got like a basic gist of what protein is and I'll kind of just dumb it down in layman's terms. So basically what I understand protein to be is just something that's reparative for hair. And I'm gonna try and explain this in the best way possible. So for example, imagine a hair strand. It's just one line and it's meant to be smooth. The healthiest of healthiest hair is smooth. But nobody has like 100% healthy hair, right? So like for me, I have colored hair. So I know that some of my colored strands might look a little bit more bumpy. And basically what protein does is it comes in on top of that and kind of fills in the bumps in your hair strand and then allows it to be smooth and healthy. And that's the kind of reparative aspect that everybody talks about from protein. I really hope that made sense. So I'm just on my phone here, I have a few notes. So there are different types of proteins that are specifically used in hair. So these will range from amino acids to cholesterol, collagen, keratin, milk protein, oat flour, etc, etc. I'm sure you've heard of some of these in your products before. So most times when a product claims to be reparative for your hair, it will contain one of these types of proteins in there. So all of that sounds fine and dandy and great and it's like, oh, why would I not want to use protein, smoothen out my strands, make it all healthy again. But the thing is, you don't ever want to overdo it with protein. And this is kind of the dark side that I feel like people aren't necessarily aware of. So because you keep hearing so much about the reparative aspect and how good it is, it kind of makes you feel like, oh my gosh, I gotta do protein treatments every week, gotta do it all the time. But that's not necessarily the case. It's very easy to overdo protein in your hair and that's something that you definitely don't want to do because then that can reverse all of the reparative effects and it just can leave your hair feeling like full of buildup and then that causes frizz and then breakage. It's just like a whole train of things that you just don't want to deal with. You really just gotta listen to your hair and just kind of figure out when it's telling you that it actually needs a little bit of protein. So basically what I'm saying is your protein treatment products should not be something that you pick up as often as like once a week. Now your hair will definitely tell you when it needs protein, so it's just a matter of kind of listening to your hair, watching your hair, seeing how it's behaving. There are a few signs that your hair will kind of show you to say, give me some protein mom, I need something. And some of those signs are a loss of elasticity. So if you find that your curls aren't as bouncy and nice as they normally are, um, frizz, if your hair is just not lasting as long and just not curling up right, even though you're using the same things that you've always used, those are some signs that your hair is calling out for some protein. Breakage is also another huge sign. Can't forget that one. So when you do see these signs from your hair, of course, by all means, reach out for your protein product. Do what you gotta do and you'll see the effects right away that your hair is like back to life. It's just important to not get like too crazy when you see those results because then it's so easy to be like, oh, this works so well in my hair, I'm gonna use this every week. You definitely don't want to overdo protein in your hair because that honestly can be the actual worst. So I personally would suggest a protein treatment once a month. I really don't think that you would need more for your curls unless your hair is severely damaged. Even with me with colored hair, I kind of take care of my hair on the regular. I don't use heat in my hair. I didn't use bleach to color it, so it's not necessarily damaged in any way. My protein treatments, when I do them, it's more of a like maintaining healthy curls. So for someone with like semi-healthy hair, I definitely would not suggest doing a protein treatment more than once a month. 
If your hair is more severely damaged, that's when you will want to then use your protein treatments much more frequently. It's just a pretty fine line. Like you just don't want to like overdo it, but you want to still do it, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like just don't get too crazy in love with your protein. Your moisture, I feel like you can slap on your moisturizing treatments all the time, every week, no problem. But protein, you just gotta be a little bit careful with. Now with all that being said, I definitely have to share with you guys some of my favorite protein or like reparative hair treatments. So I have three all-time favorites. So for number one, that is gonna be my Olaplex number three at-home hair treatment. You guys have heard me talk about this before on the gram, on here. I love this treatment. It is so bomb. So on the bottle of this at-home treatment, it actually does say that you can use this once per week and then for extra damaged hair two to three times per week. But I personally don't like to use it that often. I find that my curls kind of just don't need it. So I will use this either bi-weekly or like I said earlier, just once a month for my little protein pick-me-up. This is some hardcore stuff, okay? This is really, really good, and if you have like damaged hair or if you're struggling with your hair, this is really meant to like get in and like repair hair. Like this is extremely effective. I only started using this once I colored my hair, again, just to kind of maintain healthy curls, um, but this is bomb. This is so, so good, so easy to use. My only thing that I don't like about it is how small that is. Like, why is this so small? Even for my kind of short-ish hair, I mean, it's not short anymore, but you know. I will go through one bottle in like two months and then I gotta go get another one. Like, that. nobody wants that, you know? Especially if you have damaged hair and you need to use this two to three times a week, this will only last you one week. Olaplex, please give us a bigger bottle. Thank you in advance. My second favorite protein treatment is the Camille Rose Beridi Nectar Repair Cholesterol Treatment. So as I mentioned earlier, cholesterol is one of those types of proteins that you can use in your hair. This stuff is so good. So it's so funny because when I first tried this product, I was like, oh my God, it's so good. And then as you do, because it works so good, you're like, oh, I gotta use this all the time. And then that's when I kind of realized like, oh, like, my curls aren't responding to it the same way that they did the first time. And that's because I was then overdoing it with the protein in my curls. I didn't realize that at the time, but after having conversations with other hairstylists, that's when I realized, like I look back and I was like, wow, that's why that stopped working for me as well. But yeah, this is really bomb super super moisturizing as well this is meant to really help out dry brittle and lifeless textured hair all right and then my third and final favorite like reparative mask is the diva curl deep sea repair seaweed strengthening mask this smells so good it's so good so as i stated with the camille rose products the same thing happened with this for me i tried it once i was obsessed I kept going and then I realized my curls were a little bit like off. It was just frizzy and just not behaving right. And again, it just goes to show like when you overdo it with protein, it's just packing and packing on top of your curls and it's just completely unnecessary. And at that point, it just becomes buildup instead of anything that's helpful to your curls. But yeah, I love, love, love to do this once a month, like I said, as I do with my protein treatments. And when it comes to my Diva Curl products, I usually kind of like to mix them all the time. I see the Diva Curl hairstylist doing that, so I'm like, hey, I'm going to try that too. So I usually mix this with my Heaven and Hair Mask, which y'all have heard me rave about as well, so that I get that moisture and some of this protein, and then it's just a match made in heaven. So basically, to summarize, protein is great, just don't get too obsessed and don't do it too often. I really hope you guys found this useful. If you did, as usual, go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. Please also don't forget to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. You have another chance now. Just, just go right ahead. And in the meantime, as usual, two more videos right here for you to just keep watching. I don't judge if you binge, so it's fine. Just keep going. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.